we have two trees out of the garden. There's quite a lot of them here uh, for workshops or for people who want a tree for themselves. And this is a typical one. And we will have another one, and then we have a choice of two, and we'll take one that we put, uh, bring a bit further. Uh, let's speak about how do you select material anyway. Well, I, I think you, you go to a nursery, and, and, and first of all, you see a lot of trees, and you can see the forest for all the trees. First look at how healthy the trees are. Now, this is obvious that this is very healthy. It, it's very obvious that it loves to grow, and so that's already a good sign. Then you look at oh, how, what sort of soil is there. This is substrate, and that's not really soil. That's a very good sign. That's probably why it looks so healthy. Uh, and then you look at some sort of th thing that uh, attracts you. I would say you, you look at some trunk movement or, and the old bark and the feeling of an old tree. If that attracts you, and if, if a straight trunk attracts you, then this is for you. If you want a really bending trunk, then take another tree. There's plenty here. Now, we also want to make sure that we can afford these trees. Of course, they're, they're very, very good trees. They cost several grand, and this is not what we want to look at here. We want to look for at affordable stuff, let's say in the $200, $300 range, and that's one of those, a typical one. Fine. So the next thing is, uh, if I turn it around and then I can see uh, there's many uh, ways of looking at it. Of course, you don't look at it from here. Somebody put it in this pot in that position. And you think that's sacred? No, it's not. It's just because it fell over in the pot. Can we not do this? Let's see. Bang. Looks a bit better. Maybe we can do more. Sure. Let's see. Quick and dirty Walter Paul methods, huh? You learned something already. Okay, now that looks more. So here we see, see a, a scar, which I think can be a feature. That could be a reason to choose this as a front. Like that. Mm -hmm. You see, out of the leaning tree, we, we make an upright tree. Okay, let's assume that this should be a sort of a position. What do we like on that tree? Well, I do like the old bark. I do like this feeling that it's not a youngish tree. I mean, it's it's a, s a small spruce, but uh, this w if that had grown in a, in a good environment, that would be at least uh, six meters high already. So this is probably older than 50 years. Mm -hmm. It is a good idea to, to, to think of shortening a tree almost always. Now, it's very obvious that this tree is a bit high. Now, just see what's happened if I took it off here, how much different that already is. Okay, so, so then we have a much shorter tree, and this is the crown now. What do we do here? This is, uh, yeah, we, may, we may want both of these, but we may not want this here. Uh, this is very small and very short. Where, where is our main branch going? I think this here that, that I'm now wiggling, that should be the main branch, although it's very thin, but it starts out thick. So I, I have this option to make this look like a nice Christmas tree. That's what he has talent for. He wants to be a nice, moderate-looking tree, not very very exciting, not very, very powerful, dynamic. Uh, there's people who want that. You know, they, very often mild people want a mild tree or, or they want exactly the contrary of what they are. doesn't matter. You have a preference. If you like a, a nice, good-looking, moderate sort of tree, then that, that's it. Okay, so we said we can cut this off and make this a top. I think that's a pretty good idea. Okay. So it's okay, it's fine, and that's what you get for 200 bucks. I would be probably happy with it, but maybe there's a better one. Let's say uh, you are a normal sort of person who has 200, 300 bucks in your pocket. You go to the sponsor nursery, you're all excited, and you want to find something for the, the best for your money. Okay, so it should be a conifer, okay. 
and you go through hundreds of, 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 of trees and, and which one do you pick? My suggestion is pick one that is absolutely happy and healthy. Okay, well, I think even a blind man can see this is happy and healthy. So, so how, how does the blind man see uh, wh whether this is healthy or not? Well, he sees it in, depending on what time it is uh, in the year, it's the springtime now, on the new growth. You, you see the light green, uh, it's very happy and healthy. There's a lot, so where there is one spot, there's sometimes two or three or even more uh, buds, that's, that's a good sign. And it's all over the tree, so, so that's, that's good. The old foliage is also green. Uh, in winter, you may uh, come see the same tree and it, it looks dull. So you need then some expert who, who can tell whether that's happy or not. In, if that were about four, three or four weeks earlier, uh, there would not have been new growth, but there would have been buds. So it's very important to learn to look at buds. Often, the old foliage looks kind of not so happy and healthy, even yellowish, brownish. But as long as the tree has lots of very good-looking, happy, happy buds, then it's okay. Okay, then pick something which is your kind of size tree. Uh, uh, it's, this is a smaller tree. Many, many people would prefer a smaller tree over a very big one. But keep in mind that the tree will, during the styling process, usually get much smaller than it was before. So if it was that high, you could still hack it down. But somebody already apparently did that, okay. So, but that was not real styling. Somebody just cut off the top here. Okay, the next thing is you look, is there something that excites you? Is there something that you see and you for some reason like? Well, I think I like very much that this has an interesting curve. Some people might be intimidated now because that does not look like a, the tree that they are used to, okay, but usually it's a very unusual sort of form can make a more interesting tree than a normal form. Uh, so I really like this bend of the trunk, however that happened, I don't know. And I, I do like the old bark. So this is a small tree, uh, less than one foot. However, it is an old tree, I can tell from the bark. A very old tree, like let's say 60, 70 years or even older. Uh, the, these trees, uh, I think I even collected that a long time ago. I think that was a pretty good pick on first sight. Uh, as you see, I'm already looking like that because I cannot really see, you know, the first thing we do, we cut off this plastic very, very soon. Okay, so yes, he's very happy. Uh, the, these are the new buds, uh, the, the light green of this year, and, and the old foliage of last year is also very green. Oh, this is perfect. So I think for, for 250 bucks, we really got a good deal. Let's see what we do with that. Of course, every tree has a good front, which is usually chosen as the right front. But, but some trees, especially natural trees, have many good fronts. So that's the kind of problem you want. You want to have many fronts and not be able to decide which is the best one. Wonderful, a luxury problem. So here I see at least a couple, but, but you know, first, before we even really go into detailed styling here, we first have to get rid of this plastic rim to see more. Okay, how much better that is now. Okay, the next important thing, very important, you don't only look at the tree, you also look at, at, at the growing medium. It better be some modern substrate, uh, whatever that is. That can be pumice, uh, baked loam, that can be, be uh, turfus in America, uh, it can be akadama. It can be also professional, um, uh, a tree growing medium with some sort of, of peat or, or rough bark in it anyway. So, so here we have some lava split, which is fine. So this looks okay. So there's a reason why this tree looks happy because it has a good substrate. I try to avoid the word soil. Soil, the S word, I don't want to say because soil we used to use uh, 30, 40 years ago and then 
at that time it was extremely important to to know how to water trees because you could underwater or certainly overwater them, drown them, they would die. Now with modern substrate, fortunately we don't have this problem anymore as much. You, it's very difficult to overwater because everything that's too much will go out. So I'm, it's very important to see what sort of substrate is there because once in a while you find a very nice tree. However, it's in, in, not in the right substrate, it's really in soil. Well, you may still take it, but then you must be very careful about uh, watering. And then uh, you have to listen to the old guys who tell you that watering is the most important thing that you have to learn. I now tell them with modern substrate, an idiot can, can, can water. You just water and when you finish, you water a bit more and you cannot really drown the tree. However, sometimes you, you do get a tree which, which is in soil. Be very careful about that. I have killed a few bringing them home and just watering like everything else and then I overwatered them. Okay, now after uh, having taken off this rim, I think we now want to have a, a, a wedge uh, to, 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 to put the, the tree in the right position. Well, well, why would you use a wedge? I mean, can you not style the tree like this? Well, the truth is that someone at some time put that tree into the pot and probably that was not an artist and that person was not really looking at exactly. The main thing at that point in time was to keep the tree happy and healthy and fix it somehow and, and let it grow. So never ever think that, that a, the position the tree is in is, is a final position. Sometimes it is, but usually not. So I do use wedges uh, to, to, to play around with it and see whether, whether a different position uh, could be a good one. Well, I think, yes, this is, so this is interesting. Now I can see that, yes, this movement of the trunk really excites me. It looks good from, from two sides, from this side, uh, which looks like it is the front at the moment because it's open. Uh, and also this side. Now for most people, this would not be an obvious front because it's closed. So what? <laughs> you can take this off, you see. It may well be the front. So do not think that because, just because there's some branches that, that the other side must be the front. I look first at the nebari, which is the lower part of the trunk, the surface roots. That's the English word for nebari, I think. And I look for the first third of the trunk and the rest is at the moment not so interesting artistically. So why is that? Why do I first look at this? Because most people would look at the crown. Is it not finally styling the crown? Well, yes, it is about styling the crown which fits to the trunk. But the crown you can style in many, many ways. You can change it, you can wire it, you can bend it. But you cannot really bend this anymore. You have to live with that. And I to tell you bad news, Nebari is probably forever as it is. It will grow older, it will be bigger, but not much better. So you better carefully look at what the roots look like. It's extremely difficult to change these and this. So, so, you, so I, I take a look and say, aha, uh -huh. the trunk is fine, the trunk is interesting. Uh, here are some roots which are visible and, and, and fine. However, they are not, unfortunately, from, for many uh, people, what the book tells you, like going in a radial way and being ideal roots. So my take is, well, first of all, this is not a, a, a house-grown, uh, nursery-grown tree. This is a wild tree, and, uh, and it has a wild shape. And a wild shape of trunk can very well have a wild shape of fruit. So it's not necessary to have the radial roots. If you really want these, We'll take another tree. But with this tree, we, will, we want, we'll live with that. It's not that we hate this, we, we, we like it. I think we now have found a pretty good position either from here or from here. We don't even have to make that decision uh, right now where the exact front is. It's either here or here. So that's fine. Okay, now the, the, the real styling can start.
you have to understand that you see a lot of stylings and demos or in reality in, in conventions you see people on stage or working with trays and you think oh that's bonsai that's what i have to do that's not bonsai that's a show and what's the purpose of that the purpose of that is the young man wants to show you what a star he is how good he is so he wants to end up with a very very nice looking result which is very impressive okay uh, you may also want that, but you may certainly will not have the, the skills that, that he has. And by the way, you want your tree to live, okay, and you want to be on the safe side. So I suggest that this uh, is not uh, for me important anymore to show off what a star I am. So we can concentrate on, on what, in, in, so let's say, in, in, a medium advanced person would do. To be on the safe side, uh, in general with most trees, it's a good idea to not cut off too much. Uh, in, on, on stage, off, a lot is cut off because it's professional and, and it looks better, but there's always a slight risk that's too much. Why is that? That is because the tree has to survive. The tree has to, to generate uh, enough uh, energy to, to be alive and to grow. Okay, so, so what? So what has that to do with cutting off? Many people don't know that the energy does not come from feeding, fertilizing, and the roots. It comes from the foliage. Interesting. So this green foliage is the energy that, that brings all... Uh,